I have played 2380 days of Fortnite. And throughout these days, I've learned a lot of things through trying and failing, various different YouTube videos, and of course, my pro player friends in the space. These things have taken years to learn, but today I'll go over all of them so that you won't have to make the same mistakes I've made. And through listening to the tips in today's episode, you'll be able to reach a higher rank, get better mechanics, or make earnings. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I wish somebody told me years ago would have been the statement, if you're not losing, you're doing something wrong. Of course, I'm not talking about playing in-game when referring to this saying, but when it comes to creative, if you always win, you're limiting your own improvement heavily. The problem a lot of people have is that they leave as soon as they're matched up against someone who's beating them, whether it be in matchmaking one you want or against one of your friends. If you get blessed enough to play against someone who beats you when you're trying your best, that's how you know you're on the right path to improving as a player. When we have to try hard in order to win, get punished for the mistakes we make, and on top of that, even get a little bit frustrated when we lose that is easily the times we improve the most. Now, I strongly recommend trying to find someone who can beat you 70% of the time in the one who wants you play. By following this rule, you'll make sure the opponent is really good because he wins the majority of your one who wants, but you still win a few other rounds because the difference in skill isn't so uneven that the practice becomes ineffective. The same rules can of course be applied to 2v2s, 3v3s, or 4v4s. And the moral of the story is that you need to become someone who always looks to improve if you want to be a great player. And the journey to becoming super good is filled with losing, and the sooner you'll be able to accept that, the sooner your improvement will become drastically faster. Another mistake I made for years was that I thought that if I put more hours into the game than anyone else, I would become better than anyone else. However, what I learned was that you should not focus on the quantity of time you put in, but rather actually getting quality practice when you play. This tip is of course directed at those of you who want rapid improvement, or even getting to the very top level of competitive. Now, the reason the hours play per day doesn't matter nearly as much as the quality of the time you play is because anyone can put in long hours. There are thousands of 13 year olds putting in 8 hours a day into the game, but where we get the advantage is through focusing on making these hours as effective as possible, because that's a skill a lot of people don't have. There are many ways to have high quality practice, and through testing I have found 3 main ways of ensuring that every time you play you get a little bit better. Before that, if you're looking for great deals on V-Bucks, skins or bundles, check out Kinguin. In addition to their great deals on V-Bucks, they also offer anything you need if you're looking for a new game to play, with over 200,000 fantastic offers. The cool thing about Kinguin is that they have insane daily offers on a variety of products, so checking them out daily is a good idea if you're looking for a steal. If you want to buy a Fortnite item and or a game, you can simply do so by clicking a buy now and then buy now again. This will add the items to your cart and take you to this page. On this page, make sure to type in the code MARIN and press apply for 12% off of your order. Then you can go through with your purchase cheaply and safely. And if you ever have any questions or anything happens to your order, customer support is available 24-7 to help you with any issues. To check out all the incredible offers on Kinguin, go down to the top of the description below or the pinned comment. The first is benchmarking your strengths and weaknesses, and often. Doing this can easily be done by playing 20 ranked matches, looting up and getting good weapons and mats. And then you want to start fighting absolutely everyone you see. Then you want to write down why you went down in every single one of the games. The reason this is so important to do is because a lot of people actually don't know what their weaknesses are without having evidence in front of them showing that one aspect actually needs improvement. When I did 20 ranked matches, I saw very clearly that awkward edits was a massive weakness of mine. That was the reason I ended up getting eliminated 12 out of the 20 matches I played. Not being able to do edits where I'm all the way into a wall or having to do an unusual stair edit. If you're curious, the second biggest weakness of mine was being bad at doing counter damage when I was low on HP. Moving on to the second way of ensuring quality practice, we are focusing on maximizing repetitions. And let me paint you a picture that showcased the insane importance of focusing on repetitions. Two players want to become insane fraggers. Player A has four hours to play every day, but player B only has two. Player A hops onto the game and instantly starts playing ranked. He cares about his rank and therefore tries not to fight a lot of players in order to get good placements in the games he plays, so that he can make good ranked progress. He goes on to play one game on average every 30 minutes, so he gets in 8 ranked games in his 4 hours of playing. He doesn't get more than 5 kills on average every game, so that 
that is 40 eliminations and 40 practice repetitions towards his fighting skill in one day of practice. Player B, on the other side, also hops directly into ranked. However, he only cares about improvement and does not care about his rank. He also manages to play one game every 30 minutes. So he gets in four ranked games in his two hours of playing. But the difference with player B is that he's able to, on average, get 15 elims in the games he plays because he goes around W keying everyone. So in the span of two hours and four ranked games, player B has gotten in 60 eliminations and 60 practice repetitions towards his fighting skill. Of course, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that player B over time will become a much better fighter than player A. So whenever you get on, whether you're bad at triple edits, fighting or end games, always focus on maximizing your repetitions. By doing this, you'll already be ahead of 90% of the players trying to get good at the game. The third way of ensuring that you actually get better when you play is doing something you usually don't do when on the game. So if you usually play build fight one once every day, play some zone wars instead. If you usually play as an IGL in duo customs, try playing as a fragger instead. Now, whatever it may be that you usually do, switch it up every now and then. The reason behind why this will make you so much better is because you won't play on autopilot like you will if you play your normal routine. Playing on autopilot does not challenge us in any way, shape or form. And using your brain to adapt to a new environment or play style will over time make us a ton better. One example of how this has been effective for me is through forcing myself to play high ground in fights. Now, for some reason, I've always been a lot better at fighting from low ground positions. But objectively speaking, the skill ceiling of fighting from high ground is a ton higher than from low ground. So I had to force myself to play from height and as a result, I became so much better in my in-game fights. The same can be said for players who are really good at playing defensively in-game. If that's you, you should play aggressively when practicing. You get the point I'm trying to make. Another thing I learned way too late is that the most important fundamental you need to practice upon is never ever losing track of the opponent you're fighting. In the start of Fortnite, I was relatively good mechanically in comparison to most others. However, I rarely got to use my strength because of my lack of awareness. I think the same can be said for a lot of you guys watching. A few of you have top tier mechanics, but for some reason don't succeed to the same level as other good mechanical players. If this sounds like you, chances are high it's because you lose track of the opponents you're fighting. You see, if you're able to always see your enemy whilst fighting, you'll be able to punish the very first mistake they make. And if you have slightly worse awareness, you might lose out on the opportunity and as a result you'll have to fight longer because you need to wait for the second mistake they make. This is negative because you up the chances drastically of getting third partied, you waste a ton of materials, and of course you can't forget that chances are they don't make more than one punishable mistake. If that's the case, you might be getting eliminated because of your lack of awareness. So whenever you practice next, make sure to practice upon full awareness over the opponents. Trust me, you do not want to build bad habits here. If you for some reason fail to have awareness, you're either building and editing too much or too fast. So slow down and make sure you don't lose track. Talking about good players, I also need to talk about the power of watching yourself. If you're newer to Fortnite and the competitive side of the game, watching others is a great way to learn how to fight over rewards by simply watching yourself play every day for 20 minutes. Now, this is something I also understood way too late. And the one thing that I stood out about watching my own gameplay is how easy it is to fix small mistakes. When I started watching my own games back through recording with Nvidia Shadowplay, I saw so many small mistakes I didn't even know I made, both in fights and early, mid and end games. Through watching myself, I could easily fix two mistakes a week. Through a year, that turns out to be more than 100 mistakes fixed, and the outcome is that you're a much better player at the end of it. The reason I stopped watching pros as much as I used to was simply because I don't know their comms, pre-planned strategies, or their strengths and weaknesses, meaning their way of playing will be totally different to mine, and what works for them doesn't necessarily work for me. Next up, I want to talk about one of the mentality shifts that overnight improved my tournament placements, my ability to clutch, and also long-term has proven to be insanely effective for improvement. And that's thinking it's always your own fault. So this mindset can be applied in so many different scenarios. For example, if your teammate dies in a 2v2 and you fail the clutch, your fault. If your teammate dies in an endgame and you're not able to clutch up a top 5, your fault. If your teammate has a bad day and you place terribly on the leaderboard at the end of a tournament, your fault. Now, I know a lot of people will say that they get held back by their teammates and as a result get terrible placements in tournaments. But using energy on blaming your teammates will not only make them play worse, but it will also make you play worse since you don't think about what you could have done differently in a match where you were left to clutch. The sad reality is that most of the time we can't control how our teammates play. All we can do is make the best out of bad situations when they happen. Like for instance, when you needed to win a 1v2, clutch an endgame, or even an entire
entire tournament. Moving on, you need to understand that nobody cares how you look when you play. Now, the reason I say this is because as a content creator, I wanted to try to look as good and entertaining as possible when I played. But sadly, this didn't make me play as good as I possibly could. Playing slow and being accurate was a way better playstyle for me when it came to performing in tournaments, compared to playing fast and visually looking entertaining to watch. But the cool thing with playing slow and focusing on accuracy was that over time, my playstyle actually became more and more enjoyable to watch because I was practicing upon the correct fundamentals that allowed me to improve every time I played. Playing slower also came with way better tournament results. And for me, that is what matters when I play. And whilst we're on the topic of tournament results, I also need to note that it doesn't matter how you perform as long as you do. A lot of players say that it's cringe to use a certain item to get good placements and therefore do not use it. And again, place worse than what they could have potentially done just because they don't want to use said item. This is stupid because you might be missing out on great results because of your pride. And if you ever want to reach a good enough level to make earnings consistently, you'll do whatever it takes to do so, even if that is by abusing the meta and using an unskillful item. Setting goals has also been something that has helped me a ton, but not setting performance goals, but rather effort goals. Performance is something that usually comes after effort has been put in. So in a week, my goals can, for example, be playing 100 ranked matches, watching back recordings from tournaments for three hours, or playing 300 rounds of Zone Wars 2v2s. Of course, what effort goals will be effective will vary from person to person, depending on what you need to work on to become a better player. And you can't forget that everyone has different schedules, so you gotta make an effort goal that fits the amount of time you have to play. The reason I don't like performance goals is because it puts unnecessary pressure on me that definitely won't make me play any better. If I'm good enough to get a great placement, that will happen regardless of whether or not that has been a goal of mine. Effort goals also feels amazing amazing by the end of the week. If you start on Monday by making a weekly to-do list of set objectives and you follow through and do all of that in the week and check off everything on Sunday, you get this fantastic feeling and you know that you spent your time wisely. A feeling that is not great is getting eliminated early in endgames. Luckily, it's easy to fix that by understanding that timing in endgames is everything. The main thing you absolutely must know is that if you have mats, you should always rotate the second the moving zones swap direction. The reason this is so good is because because you'll be rotating before everyone else. And as a result, you probably won't be getting shot and nobody will be able to contest the layer you're on. Now, if you don't have mats, you obviously can't instantly rotate. You need to play it slow and look for opportunities for refreshes. Refreshes on the back side of the moving zones are usually multiple times worse than refreshes on front side, but often way easier to get. The best time to get refreshes if you don't have mats is actually on zone swaps. If you can just survive until a moving zone switches direction, people will often lack awareness and you can capitalize off of this weakness. If you have good mats, getting refreshes frontside is definitely the way to go. You can do so by doing a six square pre-edit on another team that is also staying at the front, dropping down someone who's a layer above you, or simply taking tops on a team below you. Every moving zone is important to stay ahead on, but the most important is of course the final one. Staying all the way ahead of the final moving zone will ensure that you claim space before anyone else in the lobby, and you'll have a lot of time to look around, gather awareness, and eventually win the game. On the other side, we of course have to talk about early games, and more precisely, off-spawn fights. You see, limiting off-spawn deaths is quite literally the easiest thing in Fortnite, as pre-planning for a solid early game only comes down to a few main things. Firstly, you of course have your drop, which can easily be perfected with a drop map. You can make a drop map yourself, you can buy one, or you can use other third-party tools to secure a perfect glide. After you've gotten a perfect drop, you naturally need to know about your drop spot, and if you're landing at a POI, it's important important to understand how to loot the most amount of chests and floor spawns in the quickest way possible. I would also strongly recommend learning what's worth farming and not. Some farmables on off spawns give no mats, and other ones gives a ton of mats in only a few swings. It can also be smart to land close to the highest position at your drop spot, as a high ground position is not only best when it comes to fighting, but also to gather awareness of the other players or teams landing at your spot. If you follow all of these steps, you'll already be better than 99% of players when it comes to off-spawn fights, and as a result, you'll heavily limit the times you go down early on. Mid-games are a lot more complicated than early games, but what's important in order to have an advantage over anyone else in the lobby is rotating early from your off-spawn. A lot of people make the mistake of staying at their drop way too long. This will sadly make the later rotations contested, and you'll heavily up the chances of griefing your own game. The clue that consistently works every game is early on getting to the dead side. You want to get to the part of dead side that is furthest away from POI. This will also make sure your later rotations are easy.
consistency. Naturally, you do not want to waste metal when boxing in the early stages of mid game, but rather reformable brick. Moving on, I gotta say that if you've been trying to succeed competitively for a long time without any level of success, you need outside help, whether it be from a coach or a friend who's willing to put in a lot of time to help you get better. Now, I know a lot of people want to achieve success themselves without the help from anyone else, but it's insane how valuable an outside objective perspective can be for your improvement. As mentioned earlier, there are so many things you might not notice about your own gameplay that can easily be fixed by simply adding another person to look over your games. Everyone I know who has gotten good has understood that they're not perfect, and they've also understood that getting outside perspectives is super valuable. What a coach can help you with in the span of one month might take five months to fix if you want to do it yourself. The important thing to remember if you do get a coach is to give him some pointers on how you want him to help you. For example, if you are really good at early and mid games, but terrible at end games, you can ask him to find out why you're not seeing success in that area. If you're struggling in fights, you can ask him why that is, and so forth. Putting a coach to work on answering a question you have will always make the collaboration more beneficial between you and them. The takeaway from all of this is that you need to understand when things aren't working. This is a skill that I am really bad at myself. I try to do something for super long and waste a ton of time because I'm extremely bad at understanding when I'm practicing the wrong things that aren't helping me improve at all. And I think a lot of Fortnite players struggle with the same thing. So if this sounds like it may be the case for you, look into getting help from an outside person. A lot of you guys watching this video have what it takes when it comes to mechanics. You're more than good enough at building, editing, and aiming to earn money consistently from tournaments. The only thing holding you back is simply that you don't have good game sense. Game sense is arguably the most important skill to master if you want to go pro in Fortnite. And one of the easiest ways to effectively improve it is through watching pros play and finding out what they do differently. You see, the majority of pros have set game plans for early, mid, and end games, and copying their playstyles can very often be a simple way to better your placements. Of course, figuring out their exact plans is hard, but what you can do is hopping into replays and skipping to the end game, for example. Before first moving, you pause the replay and you think how you would have played that first moving in your head. Play it out fully. What layer you would have played, whether you would have tried to get a refresh, if you would have looked at high ground or low ground, everything. Play out the full first moving, and when you have it played out, you play the replay and see how they play it. This way, you'll find differences. And what's important is understanding why they play it differently. What's the benefit of following their strategy compared to yours? If you're able to do this, you'll evolve as a competitive player and fast. The same trick can be used for fights. Hop into a replay and try to find a fight between two pro teams. Before they start fighting, you pause the replay and think how you would have played that exact fight with those mats and weapons. Then you play the replay and find the difference and the why behind it. This is such an easy trick that will help you improve your game sense a lot. Obviously, doing this one time won't make you booga, but if you ever wonder why someone succeeds consistently and you don't, you can follow this exact strat to find your answer. Playing on a tournament day is stupid, and I see so many players doing it. Now, of course, making sure you're properly warmed up is really important, but some players play customs hours before a tournament thinking it will have a positive impact on how they'll play in the upcoming tourney. The opposite is true. On a tournament day, you want to warm up for max one hour before the cup starts. The preparation for the tournament has been in the weeks or months leading up to it, not in the hours before. The reason it's so damaging to your results to play on a tournament day is because you might play bad in the customs and think you have a bad day. This will of course make it so that you don't perform as good as humanly possible in the actual upcoming tournament due to a lack of confidence. On a tournament day, you should take it totally easy, relaxing, so that you ensure that you'll be able to be focused for the upcoming three and a half hour tourney. There is no denying that a good PC makes Fortnite a lot easier to play and perform in. And I know getting a top tier new PC is insanely expensive. So I just want to share how much better performance you can get on a budget if you're using used marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace to upgrade your computer. A lot of people don't ever think about buying used components. But when I was building my PC in the start of Fortnite, the majority of it was used parts that I got for ridiculously cheap. Now, the PC wasn't anywhere near the level of top pro players, but I was able to start a YouTube channel and make some money through my not so great secondhand PC. And it really opened up a lot of opportunities for me to upgrade to a even better PC later down the line. If you already have a fantastic computer, you also need to make sure XMP is enabled. XMP is a setting that you can turn on in your BIOS and it basically makes your RAM run at full speed. It's one simple click in the BIOS and you'll get so much better performance 
environments, it'll feel like you're playing a totally different game. Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to PCs and Fortnite is having a solid CPU cooler. Fortnite, as you all know, is a CPU heavy game, so making sure that your processor is properly cooled down will make the experience much better, and it'll also up the chances of you succeeding competitively by a whole lot. 